What up guys, happy Tuesday. So what we have got, warm up. You are going to do 45 seconds per station, followed by 15 seconds of rest and transition. And you're gonna do that two rounds with four stations. So what we're gonna do, first station, plank hold. Gonna be in a high plank, shoulders nice and active, press through, get some love from your puppy to make it a little bit more comfortable or not. And then we're just gonna keep a nice active midline the entire time. Once you get through 45 seconds there, we're gonna do 45 seconds of bunny hops in place. So just stand on the toes, working on rebounding, warming up the calves. Next station is gonna be a single leg broad jump to a two foot landing. So you are going to, off of one leg, I'm gonna load, jump, and land softly. And then I'm gonna to switch to the other leg, same thing, load, jump, land softly. Don't jump super far, just get that extension, get that violent hip, uh, hip that we're looking for. Then your last station, you're gonna do five scat push-ups plus a down dog. And you can do that as slow or as quickly as you like. So what we're gonna do is again, five <laughs> scat push-ups. So from here, I'm gonna press my shoulder blades apart, squeeze them together, run through this range of motion. And then after five reps, I'm just gonna come into a down dog and stretch out those shoulders a little bit. And you're gonna go through that two times. So it's gonna be an eight minute clock total. When you are done with that, you're gonna do three 15 second crow poses, resting as needed in between. So for the crow pose, just a reminder what we're looking for here. So the hands are gonna be about shoulder width. So I'm gonna go just outside of or right under my shoulders so that my knees can contact my triceps. To start, I'm gonna bend the elbows so I create a little platform. And then from here, I'm gonna tilt gently, get my feet off the ground, and I'm gonna try and find my balance. And again, that's all about just using your fingertips, getting your forearms engaged and loading those shoulders a little bit. Three, 15 seconds. If you're feeling good there, you're more than welcome to work that up a little bit to a headstand so you could bring your head all the way to the ground or you could bring yourself into a full headstand. So rather than a tripod, bring your feet up all the way as well. So a couple options there depending on how you're feeling. After that, <clears throat> skill work for the day. 10 minute imam, we are going to do six to 10 toes to bar on one minute. And on the next minute, you're gonna do six to 10 handstand pushups. Kipping handstand pushups today. So again, we're looking to work on that skill if you have it. Um, feel free to add up some or reduce some range of motion. So stack up a couple pillows, things like that. We're gonna get into a little bit of a skill session in just a second here. For the toes to bar, six to 10 reps, or today I want you to do L-sits. So if you, if you don't have access to a pull-up bar, I want you to do an L-sit at home. So for the L-sit at home, easiest way to do it would be to just take two chairs or you know two tables, anything like that. You can do it on a countertop as well. But what we're looking for out of the L-sit is from the knee up, should create a perfect L. So, meaning, when I'm supported on my object, so when I've got my hands on my two boxes or my two chairs or whatever, this is the relationship that I want out of my hip. If you can do that with straight legs, great, awesome, go for it. If not, you're gonna scale to a Z-sit. So I'll scale to this position right here. And reminder, I want my shoulder stacked right over my elbow, over my wrist, so that I'm not putting any extra pressure where it doesn't need to be. And I want an active shoulder. So I wanna try and be pressing away a little bit. Oh, I spilled peanut butter on my foot earlier when I was having a snack and Echo found it. So this is fun for all of us. Um, so that's your Elson is, yeah, I know, you got it. Um, quarantine knife. So uh, that's gonna be your Elson though. So it's gonna be a supported Elson. If you wanna make it real hard on yourself, now what I'm gonna recommend that you do is you are gonna take two dumbbells or two low objects, and this is all the support that you get. Meaning, I'm gonna do my L-sit from, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, from right here. <laughs> so I'm going to support myself on these dumbbells and then legs are up. That is a great way to basically ensure that you're doing a perfect L-sit because by doing that, you don't have any, there's no give. If your feet drop at all, you're back on the floor. So it's a really easy way to know just how good your L is, is to do it with your hands on dumbbells. So just something to keep in mind there as a option for your L-sits today. I know, you're waiting patiently, not. 
Um, so that's going to be for your L sit. Now for your handstand push-ups. One, you can do a pike variation if you don't have handstand push-ups. That's totally fine. Otherwise, a couple things that we want to try and keep in mind. That uh, um, that ah. So that uh, crow pose that we were working on earlier. There's a reason we did that. That reason is because it works on tripod positions. So again, I said earlier, hands at or just outside shoulder width. That's about where you should be for a handstand push-up. When you roll that into a headstand, look at it. Your shadow looks like a watermark. A watermelon? Watermark. A watermark, oh, okay. Watermelon, that's good. Um, so, but anyway, so once you have those hand position, again, when I rock forward out of that crow pose, I put myself in a great tripod. So one thing I want you guys to try and keep in mind, head is always tucked for a handstand push-up, which means that the neck is neutral. So I never want to be looking like this or tucked like this when I go into a handstand push-up. I want that chin just kind of re retracted a little bit so that again, my spine is stacked. So what we're looking to do is to find a good tripod position. I'm going to start the same way I did for my crab pose. And then from there, I'm going to lean forward, neck neutral, boom. From here, if I bring my knees up, this is what the bottom of my kipping handstand push-up should look like. This is a good setup because again, I'm gonna be activating all the muscles in my chest and in my arms and in my shoulders by creating that really solid, almost over-exaggerated tripod position. So play around with that before you do your handstand push-ups, just so you can get a feel for what that's like and then try and apply that to your practice against the wall. So, that's your skill you want today. After that, our workout for the day. So every three minutes for five rounds, so 15 minute workout, you're gonna do 50 double unders, <clears throat> anywhere from 10 to 15 hang power cleans, followed by anywhere from 10 to 15 push press. So uh, let's talk first, again, in every three minute workout, you generally wanna be finishing around the two minute mark at a relatively high intensity. So let's say like 80% to eight, maybe 90% effort, done around two minutes, giving you about 45 seconds to a minute to rest before you hit your next set. So, a couple things you wanna keep in mind. 50 double unders, scale to be done under 45 seconds. So never work for more than 45 seconds on your jump rope, golden rule. Scale appropriately to fit that time frame. So you can scale the number of double unders, or you can do single unders, again, scale to fit that mold. You're also more than welcome to do jumps to a low object, anything like that. Now, after you're done there, if you're using a barbell, ideally, you're going to do 10 hang power cleans and 10 push presses at a weight that you cannot go unbroken. So ideally, you're picking a load that's challenging enough that you get to seven hang power cleans and you're like, I definitely need to put this down and take a break before I go into my push press. And by the time you get to rep seven or eight on the push press, you really don't want to hang on. Like it's a really challenging enough load that you barely squeak out those last two reps. That's in a perfect world. If you don't have access to a weight that allows you to do that, you can up the reps so that that can happen. So you can do 15 hand power cleans and 15 push press. Again, and if you can get to 10 or 12 before the weight dictates that you take a break, Go for it, and then same thing in the push press after that. So just kind of keep that in mind. The rep range is variable based on the weight that you have access to. Now, if you're going to use a dumbbell, I want you to do the whole complex on one arm and then the whole complex on the other arm. So if you're going to do a dumbbell or a kettlebell, let's say that you're going to do seven hang power clean, seven push press on the right side, and then seven hang power clean, seven push press on the left side every round. So again, coming from between the legs, if I have a single object, to the shoulder, I'm gonna come back down. After I finish off my seven reps, I'm gonna go into seven push press, and after my seventh rep, I'll switch arms, and I'll start to repeat on the other side. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're doing a single arm object. A couple things, hang power clean. Remember, hip exercise, legs. It is not meant to feel like a shrug arm exercise. It is a leg drive, and the arms are just guiding the barbell to the shoulders for a nice, smooth receiving position. Um, now, for the hang power clean, remember, hinge. So when I come down to the top of the knee, chest comes forward, shins are vertical, 
hips or back. These are the three things that I want to really focus on to make sure that I'm in a good hang position. I'm in a good hinged position that's going to give me a loading platform to extend my hips. Now, when I go to do my push press, again, shoulder to overhead is the only movement that we do that is engaged like this. So, for the push press, I want to make sure the bar is resting on the shoulders. The elbows are about 45 degrees. All my fingers are on the bar. Now, from here, I'm going to dip about three inches into my heels. When I do this, my knees are going to come forward, and that is perfect for this movement. From here, I'm going to squeeze my butt, and then press up overhead. Once that bar is back overhead, I'm going to tuck my chin, come back down right into my next rep, same shallow dip in the heels, drive up overhead. Bonus points, always ribs down. So when you're overhead with that barbell, keep your belly active, keep your ribs pulled down the whole time. That is your conditioning piece. Again, the goal, about two minutes of work, about one minute of rest, somewhere in that time frame. Now, for your accessory today, you got three rounds. You're gonna do 15 front and lateral raises. So again, lightweight objects, five pound plates, jugs of water, something like that. We are going to do 15 front raise with a slight bend in the elbow. Again, just a couple degrees, nothing crazy. Then I'm gonna do 15 lateral raises the exact same way. When you do both of those, the goal is parallel to the ground. So don't come any higher than this, and don't come any higher than this. And then you're gonna do 30 high plank shoulder taps. So again, you're gonna go back to that high plank position that we warmed up during the warm up, and you're just gonna do shoulder taps back and forth. 15 reps on each side, 30 total. When you're all done there, you got your three rounds in, we're gonna get our mobility done, which is gonna be a one minute puppy dog pose, followed by a 90 second calf mobilization. So for the puppy dog pose, just find your hands on an elevated surface, and I'm just gonna sink the head through. Stretch out that upper body a little bit. Feel free to lean side to side. Target that stretch a little bit. Hands narrow, hands wide. Again, it's gonna change up the stretch based on your grip, so keep that going. Then, for your calf mobilization, you got a couple options. So, if you have a foam roller, good for you. You get to use a foam roller, and that's nice and easy. If you do not have a foam roller, you can get a dumbbell, a kettlebell, or a barbell, elevate it a little bit. So if you're using a dumbbell or a barbell, toss a plate on it or toss a plate under it so the surface is a little bit elevated. Then from there, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start about six or eight inches up my calf, or sorry, up from my ankle. Reason being is that this is my Achilles tendon and I don't need to mobilize it because it, it doesn't need to be mobilized. So do not mobilize like below here. Again, not gonna do anything, not super helpful. So starting from, about, starting from about eight inches up, I'm going to go ahead and place that, <laughs> place my calf on the object. And all I'm gonna do is make some circles. So I'm gonna, again, flex, and I'm gonna pull up on my ankle, working that calf around a little bit. And then all I'm gonna do is, if I need to, apply some pressure with the other leg. So assuming your dog is not sitting on your other leg, you, if you need to, you can put the other leg across to get a little bit of extra pressure. This should not feel great. It shouldn't hurt, but it shouldn't feel good. Because again, what we're trying to do is essentially a little bit of deep tissue massage. We're trying to get into the muscle belly a little bit, break it up, loosen things up. So again, shouldn't feel fantastic. And you should do that for about 90 seconds on each leg. So that's your training for Tuesday. Enjoy. As always, tag us. Palace.fitness, forged by Zeus, and we will see you guys back tomorrow.